and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Wolf Creek. It's an Australian sparkling ale. Nice. Today we're going to be talking about 1976's Alice Sweet Alice. This movie is written and directed by Alfred Soule. It's one of the only movies he's ever really directed. He's done a couple of things, but this is the only one of note. A very, very young Brooke Shields is in this. Paula E. Shepard is in this. She wasn't in much. She was just in another movie called Liquid Sky. Which is surprising, again, because she's so damn good in this. Right. Linda Miller is in this, too. Daughter of Jackie Gleason. <laughs> we can watch Jackie Gleason as we eat. <laughs> Alice Sweet Alice starts off There's a family, a kind of a broken family because dad has left. The mother and two daughters, Alice and Karen. Karen's first communion is coming up and she's getting all the attention. Alice feels left out. She's yeah. jealous and she starts kind of acting out a bit. Scares the living shit out of her little sister Karen in this abandoned warehouse. She's got the mask on. Which is scary enough. Yeah, and then she takes off the mask and there's like a another mask underneath this kind of old woman mask. <laughs> That's even scarier, yeah. like, whoa. Takes Karen and locks her in this room and, like, won't let her <laughs> out. And it's the day of Karen's communion. We see Karen being strangled in the church by a person wearing the same yellow raincoat and translucent mask. Kills Karen and puts her in this kind of storage bench unit. Rips off a crucifix she just got for her first communion. And then sets the corpse on fire. <laughs> Alice enters the church and she's wearing Karen's veil that she specially got for this. She goes up to receive communion and just as she's about to get it... Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Your typical nun in these movies, old nun. Ah! <laughs> uh, the estranged dad flies in for the funeral. At the funeral, we're introduced to Alice's aunt, who is a major bitch, like just as much as Alice is. After the funeral, they're gathered and they're kind of having their cake. Do you really need that drink? Yeah. <laughs> Alice's mom tells Alice to bring some leftover cake down to their landlord, Mr. Alfonso. A disgusting slob with all these stains all over oh, his hands. Piss stains. Yeah, piss stains. <laughs> Brought some cake for you, fatty. <laughs> <laughs> takes some of the cake off the off her finger, licks it a little sexually, right? right? So it's, oh, okay, what's going on here? Alice and the ant just are not getting along. Everybody's pointing the finger at Alice, right? Because she's maybe a little odd. The dad doesn't believe it, so he kind of wants to do a little bit of investigating on his own. He's called into the the detective's office, and he they start grilling him about his daughter. And he's kind of like, well, I don't like where this is going. Her mother gets Alice to go up to Mr. Alfonso's apartment to pay the damn rent. And he's kind of sitting on one of those couches with some fan and yeah. he's all fanning himself. <laughs> yeah. And your apartment's full of garbage and junk and it smells like cat's piss. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets all pissed off and he starts yeah. kind of feeling her, eh? And yeah. You just wait. The cops are gonna love what I have to tell them about you. She grabs one of the cats and just kind of throws it and gets out of the apartment. You can yeah. hear him scream. He's all, oh, yeah. oh my god! Yeah. While the aunt is sort of walking down the stairs, this figure in the mask and raincoat comes up and just starts stabbing away. Yes, yeah. yeah, super, yeah. <laughs> super wailing. <laughs> It crawls outside while it's raining and <laughs> she's screaming the whole time that it was it's Alice it was Alice the parents have finally got Alice into like to see a psychiatrist Alice has started menstruating right so she's maturing she's becoming a woman but she didn't tell anybody but she's never told anybody so the dad gets a phone call it's like a little girl mm -hmm. crying i have your daughter's necklace so meet me at this warehouse weird yeah it's really creepy so he's making his way up the stairs and all of a sudden ding somebody comes over the banister and stabs him in the arm and he kind of fights the person off hits him in the head with like a brick and he goes fucking down and he's out when he comes to He's all wrapped up. Starts slowly rolling him towards the opening. There's only a straight drop down. Yeah. The person has that cross, that yeah. necklace. 
and he grabs the cross with his teeth and starts beating him in the fucking teeth. <laughs> when he can't with defend the shoe, himself. Yeah. <laughs> and just before the last roll, the killer reveals herself. Yeah. That's where we're going to end it. We're not going to tell you who the killer is. It is a fantastic movie. Just chalked full of all these neat themes. Everything is done so smart and oh. well. For most people, uh, religious people, church is a place of comfort, you know? Mm. You go there and you feel safe and, you know, God is there or whatever. But in these horror movies, they use, like, you know, it's an image of Mother Mary or whatever. And it's frightening. Like, While somebody is getting killed. <laughs> like, or, this should not be frightening, right. but it is. It's the context in yeah. which it's used, right? So the movie touches on, like you said, tons of themes. Coming of age. She's, like, reaching puberty. She's changing. She feels invisible, right? Mm -hmm. So she's acting out. She's acting like a bitch so people know that she exists. She wants attention. She yeah. wants to be accepted. Right? Yeah. And, yeah, everybody just keeps taking everybody else's side, not yeah. hers. And she wants <clears throat> the right type of attention because mm -hmm. the attention that she gets in the movie uh, uh, by mostly men is not the right kind of attention. Mm -hmm. Like Alfonso groping her and in that asshole cop. Or, well, did you see her tits? <laughs> well, she's just asking for it. Yeah. Like, no, that's not the type of attention a little girl wants, right? The movie also touches on, I think, the corruption of religion, right? Yeah. The ideals of religion, how they're supposed to be so, you know, innocent, and they're supposed to uplift people. Well, that's not exactly what happens in this movie. Yeah. It has the opposite effect. But that is also what does happen in real life. This killer is taken... Yeah. these ideals and twisted them into their own weird morality the theme of what makes a family a family mm -hmm. because in this movie it's like a broken family we have you know the father is kind of he's moved away and he's got a different wife and she's left with the kids by herself and she's kind of looked up down upon a little bit because well she doesn't have the perfect family but it's also realistic because families like that exist exactly yeah. nobody's perfect right? yeah. acting in this yeah. is fucking great. Yeah. You wouldn't think that they would be for the quality, the film quality, yeah. right? But the acting is top notch. You believe everything that these actors are portraying. Yeah. The grief, the misery, what Alice is going yeah. through, all the crap that she goes through. Alice is such a bitch, but you still like her because... Yeah. Well, because it's realistic. Yeah. The way she yeah. acts and the way she kind of treats Mr. Alfonso, but kind of gets a kick out of it. Yeah. I think every kid yeah. has that in yeah. them. Exactly, yeah. It's also, of course, a really neat whodunit because heavily implied in the beginning of the movie that Alice is the murderer mm -hmm. because she has the raincoat on and that mask and she scares her sister, right? Mm -hmm. Then the murders are being conducted by the exact same figure. But is it really Alice? Well, you don't know until there is a reveal. There's still so much more that goes on in this movie. Yeah. There's so many more twists and turns. Yeah. And... A lot of times when movies reveal themselves too early, they go downhill. Yeah. This actually starts to pick up steam. Yeah, because once you know who the killer is, yeah. when there's a moment where the mother's in the same uh, room as the killer, not knowing she is, and it gets very tense. The fucking VHS cover for yeah. this movie scared the shit out of us as kids. And it's super creepy. Oh, fuck. Even though it's not even the mask used in the movie. No. Um, but it's still a super creepy cover. And I, I remember for myself, like, just seeing that, I never, we never rented this movie. No. And part of, part of the reason why I never wanted to rent it was because of the cover. It yeah. looked fucking scary. It's one of those movies where as a kid you would not appreciate all the subtleties and themes and no. brilliance that this movie has in it because... <laughs> You know, let's face it, you don't want that as a kid. You just want to be entertained. You don't want to be thinking about it when it's over. What did all that mean? Yeah, you know? you're not, as a five-year-old yeah. kid, you're not going to think about all that shit. So, yeah, if you want, uh, like, a really good, smart horror movie that's got, like, a lot of themes, and you can, like, finish watching the movie and go to bed thinking about all what, you know, what does all that mean? You know, there's, yeah. like, there's so much there. You have to check out Alice Sweet Alice. It's... Such an underrated gem. It deserves its place in the annals of horror history. Definitely, definitely. So check out Alice Sweet Alice, and until next time, keep drinking.